What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna talk about Rivian, the electric vehicle startup based in Detroit, getting a ton of fanfare. Uh, huge investors, Ford, Amazon, uh, Cox Automotive, they've raised over a billion dollars in capital to bring their electric pickup and SUV to market. One of my biggest questions about Rivian um, is as, you know, as much as the electric revolution is important, so is the autonomous revolution that's happening in cars and the automotive sector. So what has been Rivian's approach to get their cars to full self-driving? Do they have an autonomy strategy? Well, luckily I was just in Austin at the Fully Charged Live event. They had a Rivian booth, they had both cars, um, a ton of their employees, they were super friendly, answered a bunch of my questions. So shout out to Rivian for being super helpful on this. Um, but I asked them, sort of grilled them about, okay, what's your autonomous strategy? Point out the hardware to me, let's talk about it. So I wanna briefly fill you in on what I learned and why I think this is really, really interesting and sort of, uh, they are basically taking the Tesla-esque approach, which is build all your own hardware and software in-house, um, collect a bunch of data from all of your drivers, use that to train your sort of smart car to get better and better at driving, collect more and more data. And so at a high level, that is their strategy similar to Tesla. So let's dive into this a little bit more. So each Rivian, uh, when I was asking them, is going to come uh, standard with L2 self-driving. I personally am hate the like L2, L3, L4, R5. I think that's a totally bad system for how advanced self-driving is, and it's really hard to mean anything. But what that under what my understanding was from talking to them about an L2 self-driving system at launch basically means you have like a simple sort of like cruise adaptive cruise control. It won't change lanes on the highway for you, but it'll like follow the car in front of you on the highway and slow down if it slows down, and sort of be like cruise control, like slightly hands off the wheel. Um, like very early and basic Tesla autopilot, is essentially what the Rivian cars will come standard with. Now, how do they accomplish that? So they have a very, uh, very sort of like overly safe and redundant network, it seems like, of hardware. So they have, um, according to my notes uh, from talking to Rivian, four corner radars um, on each corner of the car, two LIDARs in front, which I'm actually going to play footage of. And I also have like the radar, uh, I think, in the footage as well, but two LIDARs in the front. So that's the controversial LiDAR technology, 10 cameras all around the car. Um, they also have ultrasonic systems or sensors, um, which are for, for like close range proximity uh, monitoring of the vehicle. Addition, they have a high precision GPS, which can locate the vehicle anywhere in the world within 10 centimeters, apparently. And they have developed, once again, all this hardware and software in-house, um, proprietary self-driving technology. They're gonna ship it with this L2. Um, they're not gonna do anything to improve it for a year. They're just gonna collect data for a year, see how everything works, test all these sensors, um, and then they're gonna start to deploy eventually L3, which means you can change lanes and sort of more and more advanced autonomous features. They also have a driver monitoring system as well. I wasn't sure if that was an internal camera or what, but apparently that's part of their entire system. So my thoughts and analysis on this is um, really interesting. I'm pumped to hear Rivian have such a concrete laid out strategy. This is me versus me going to the Chevy Bolt booth and then being like, yeah, there's no autonomous or autopilot hardware on this car at all. At least Rivian is coming prepared with a strategy. I think they have a lot more, you know, Tesla has like eight cameras and like two sensors or two radars. I don't know if that's right, but it seems like Rivian, they have at least 10 cameras and two LiDARs and four radars and these other sensors and this GPS. So way more hardware, which I think is kind of, you know, you may be like, oh my God, it's going to cost so much money and crush their margins. Maybe at first, but then they'll see what they don't need. They'll refine the software. Always better to be safe and have more, at least to start while you're testing this um, crazy technology than less. So I think that's sort of the mindset Rivian's taking and their vehicles are pretty expensive. So they can bake that into the price. Um, I think them getting not too ambitious and saying like it's going to take us a year of just this being out in the wild to test it and then start to optimize and push out new updates and get it better um is like i i kind of like that cautious approach and much more realistic approach um and they're not saying they're going to get to self-driving by a certain timeline or immediately they're just saying like look we have all the sensors on it we're going to start collecting data right when we get it into customers hands then we're going to get better and then they're going to get that flywheel going which tesla has had going for years now. And so this is where I come back to, I think what Rivian's doing awesome, this is probably the number two self-driving strategy that I'm taking seriously, you know, this and Waymo, which is Waymo's totally different, but Rivian's gonna have that same thing going for Tesla, people paying them to train their neural network, using that fleet, that customer fleet in the wild of soon to be, you know, tens of thousands of Rivians, training it, sending data back, um, and you have customers paying for those cars, customers paying for those miles. That is a huge, that's a reversal of what Waymo, what Cruise, what all these other companies are doing, which is paying engineers to, to drive around in cars that they're paying for to collect data. You're just never gonna get enough data. It's way too expensive. So Rivian's actually got the right strategy here. But now the question is, as it, what about the execution? I mean, Tesla, first of all, has way less hardware, so that means they have way less costs. Um, they already have a million of people driving around on the road training it. I mean, it's gonna take years for Rivian to get a million cars on the road, five years maybe in a best case scenario. So 
uh, the, get, the amount of data they're going to get is going to be way, way less. And Tesla already has 3 billion miles worth of data. So, and they're collecting more and more. So Rivian is almost permanently behind. Um, and I don't see how they would catch up in this race of getting more drivers to get more data. So that is kind of a key Achilles heel, but you know, maybe Tesla hits this flexion point of at 15 billion miles and 2 million drivers, anybody can figure it out. So maybe Rivian, you know, once Tesla figures it out, eventually Rivian will catch up to them four years later. Um, and maybe hopefully they won't be too late. So, but for example, like another thing they didn't talk about is like what chip they're using. So, you know, Tesla has developed their own fully self-driving chip, super optimized to draw low power, but process all these things at once, be incredibly redundant, can't fail. Um, you know, is, uh, I don't know what chip that Rivian's using, are they using an NVIDIA chip, which is for general purpose, not single purpose for self-driving. So um, once you start to dive down into these other companies' strategies, Rivian worth billions of dollars, Amazon, Ford, pouring money into, and their autonomous strategy, um, you see like how much of an uphill battle they have, how much they're trying, how far they are behind Tesla. It just makes me get pumped about how much I think Tesla's even more ahead. And that it's it's kind of refreshing to see Rivian taking the same approach of like, let's get all the hardware on the cars, start get, training our neural net, collect the data. And so I think that's totally the right move. So I commend Rivian on this. I'm super pumped to see what happens with Rivian coming out in the wild later this year. Um, sort of this really second EV company besides Tesla that I'm kind of taking seriously. So really excited to see them. And it was fascinating to get insight on this. So huge shout out to the Rivian team. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, this is Hyperchange. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters and producers. See you guys next time.